we doing? Everybody good? It's been a long day, right? But a good day. Yeah. Skylark, have you anything to say to me? Won't you tell me where my love can be? Is there a meadow in the mist where someone's waiting to be kissed? Skylark, have you seen a valley green with spring? Where my heart can go a journey over the shadows and the rain to a blossom covered lane. I always think it's pretty hilarious when people ask a singer to speak. I want to speak to you today about the grace of great things. I borrowed this phrase from Robert Gruden's essay on creativity and innovation. What is grace? And what did it have to do with things great or otherwise? I went on Wikipedia, that's what we do, for a definition and I was immediately led astray. In the end, I had to lean on my grandmother's trusty definition. It's a divine gift, it's not yours, you can't earn it, you don't deserve it, you can't trade it, and I think that definition will do quite nicely. My mother was born in Texarkana, Texas in July of 1928. The laws of the land at that time created a barrier between my mother and the arts. Segregation made it impossible for my mother to attend a concert or go to a library or a museum. It was a dark time in our history for sure. But you can't damn up the human spirit. It will always find another way to flow. To be in her presence was to be in the presence of a wonderful, vibrant, alive human being. Flair for the dramatic, that was her. The early denials of her youth shaped her in many ways. Yet she used them as a spiritual trampoline, the very darkness of segregation emboldened her and made her want to give her children those things that she did not herself enjoy. Instinctively, my mother knew that the arts were connected to the grace of great things. She pointed my ear in the direction of the Fist Jubilee Singers and Arthur Fiedler, my heart to community theater and dance, and my eye to great art in museums and galleries. Mother was always on a quest for beauty, turning us again and again and again to the grace of great things. I was raised to believe that nothing was impossible for me. And it was in church that I found my voice. The voices of the non-famous people in the congregation, but who nevertheless had the power to move spirit, these were my mentors. They were, for me, the grace of great things. My own personal journey emboldened, embodied more than a few dark moments. In 1990, I had my very own wrestling match with the fears of not being good enough. I was a young singer and had enjoyed a bit of local success here in Raleigh and Chapel Hill and Durham. And suddenly it seemed I was in the midst of a dry white season, not a single gig between May and December. This was in my late hotel lobby, Department of Recreation School Performance Base. I remember voicing my fears of inadequacy and loss to my grandmother. Should I go to New York? Should I move to LA? Am I good enough? to tackle the big time. What about my kids, my family, my husband? Grandmother listened and wisely counseled. Bloom where you are planted. If God wants you to sing that jazz, he can take care of you right where you are in Durham, North Carolina. 
the grace of great things from the mouth of a 90-year-old. Indeed, my own personal and financial recession resulted in my developing a workshop called Baby Song. I had time to work on an idea that had been brewing in my heart for a long time. I wanted to work with very young, very sick babies in the neonatal ICU. I reworked my idea working with the Duke University Hospital um, Arts Coordinator, and we made an arrangement for me to go to the mom's room the second postpartum day and sing to the babies there. But what I discovered was it wasn't the babies that needed a song so much. It was the moms. And I learned an important lesson. It's about the journey, not the destination. I wasn't consciously headed for baby land, but that's just where I needed to be. This past year, my journey shifted once again. I could tell that the upcoming year was gonna be, shall we say, a little bit lean. And if something did not radically change, I was going to be sitting at home listening to my phone, not ringing. Oh no, began all the inner voices. Maybe you're not relevant anymore. Jazz has, after all, been rumored to be dead. And uh, you're not young enough or new enough or well-known enough or good enough. I could only see what was not happening career-wise. What was beyond my ability to see at that point, however, was that my mother's health was gonna shift and that a brand new journey called cancer was about to begin. Once again, in the dark, the grace of great things. There have been many gifts and wonderful moments on this journey. A reshaping of time for one. Inner exploration, time to ask those important questions and wait for the answers. Time to really, really clean my office. Some of the things I discovered brought a laugh and others brought a tear, but it was all the grace of great things. Time with my mother on this journey has been a very special gift. We walked hand in hand into her oncologist's office. Are you scared? No, she said. Me either, I said, but of course we both were. I asked mom, not to mention the fact that I was the Nina Freelon, you know, the jazz thing. I wanted to be incognito, but of course, as soon as I went up to the desk or off to the bathroom to, ask, to, to, to spend a little time, mom engaged all her neighboring seat mates. And when I returned to my very uncomfortable seat, heads would be huddled and I would be regarded with renewed interest. Mom would invariably have her finger pressed to her lips in a shh, 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 secret. Another time when we were preparing for yet another CAT scan, I helped mom into one of those impossible to figure out gowns. I placed her clothing into a bag marked patient belongings. I grabbed her purse and mine and wheeled off to another identically underdecorated waiting room as CNN droned on about some non-news something or other. A, a nurse grabbed my mother's wheelchair and scurried off down the, floor, down the hall. I raced to catch up with them and in the process dropped my purse, her purse, and the patient bag belonging on the floor. And I looked and there were three copies of my CD, 10 postcards advertising the same, and I cried like a newborn baby as I bore witness to a mother's love, the grace of great things. Sometimes we played a game, search for the beauty, search for the beauty. We became like forensic scientists determined to find beauty in rooms weighted with sadness and fear. Sometimes it was in someone's pretty smile or the choice to wear color or a housekeeper pushing a broom and humming a tune to herself, a string trio playing in the hospital foyer, or someone being wheeled to or from a chemo treatment in a hot pink wig. I wanted to hug and kiss her because she at that moment represented for me the grace 
of great things. In June 2010, after months of unsuccessful treatment, mom decided to forgo further therapies. With radical confidence, she told her doctor, no is a love word. But we can't do nothing, he said. Exactly, said mom, the grace of great things. Her quality of life was the most thing, the thing that was most important to her. She wanted to live her life on her terms, spending time with her grandchildren and great children in her garden and going to church. These are the things that brought her joy. So off we went in a search for more and more beauty, the grace of great things. We went to art shows, dance performance, literary shows, lectures, jazz performance, quilt shows, fiddlers at the farmer market, con choral concerts, poetry readings, and street festivals. I want to go while I can go, see while I can see, touch while I can touch, dance while I can dance. My mother, always reaching for the grace. Our roles have twirled about in unexpected and new ways. It is now my turn to point my mother in the direction of what is beautiful and good, to take her to the dance concert, to take her to the art shows, to visit the butterfly house. I feel so blessed that she pointed the compass toward beauty so long ago. I tell you this story because you need to know that what you do every day has the potential to bring you into contact with the grace of great things. Simple things, seemingly random things become powerful change agents. I challenge you to practice radical confidence and to use these seem seemingly difficult times as evidence that new strategies are needed. These energies will give birth to different ways that we can use these experiences as a trampoline to jump to the next level I challenge you to use creativity, collaboration, cooperation, and compassion in the pursuit of great things, and grace will surely follow. What a grand adventure she calls this final flight. She is in no pain or discomfort, the grace of great things. And in your lonely flight, haven't you heard the music in the night? Wonderful music, faint as a will of the wisp, crazy as a loon, sad as a gypsy, serenading the moon. Skylark, I don't know if you can But my heart is riding on your wings. If you see them anywhere, won't you lead me there? Postscript. It's 5.30 a.m., March 29, 2011. Mom seems restless. She's picking at the air intermittently, but now, now she seems calmer. There were long pauses between her breaths. She was dying. I remember thinking, is this what dying is like? Witnessing this most private of passages was both a blessing and an honor the grace of great things. At the moment of her passing, I felt as if my heart were protected in a warm blanket of unspeakable joy. I was almost embarrassed by my lack of pain or sadness or fear, the grace of great things. In the days leading up to mom's departure, I sang every song I knew, not just the American songbook, but every song I knew. For a time, she had enough strength to motion with her left hand, my personal conductor. Later, she acknowledged my concerto for Francis. 
with slight movements and an ease in her breathing. I know she could hear everything, the grace of great things. The landscape of my life has shifted in the wake of mom's departure. I'm now faced with trying to figure out who I am without this woman that I loved. This woman who grounded me in prayer and taught me to lift my heart to beauty and the art of life, the grace of great things. Her final words to me, slurred and heavy, have become my personal man mantra. She looked at me and said, I want you to be your best self. I want me to be your best self. You want yourself to be my best you. I want you to be, I want you to be your best self, your self. It was poetry, the grace of great things. In the weeks following mom's passage, I've embarked upon yet another journey. I've been sipping my cup of sorrow, sometimes swallowing hard and sometimes tempted to spit it out in anger. But her loving presence returns to me again, again in memory, signs, and wonders, in double rainbows and butterflies, the grace of great things. Be your best self. I've been learning what that truly means. There's so much I wanted to share with this woman who pointed me to beauty and light so many years ago. Three weeks ago, I received a call from the White House. Yes, that White House. I was asked to perform for our President and First Lady in Hawaii at the APEC conference. In attendance were world leaders and dignitaries from over 60 countries. This invitation was both thrilling and humbling. To be asked to represent my country, my art, my love before such a distinguished audience literally took my breath away. I had a fleeting thought as we approached Hawaii. Oh, how I wished mom could see this. As we prepared to land, I buckled my seatbelt and looked out the window and there was a beautifully brilliant rainbow. I know she was there, the grace of great 